Today, I'm really excited to interview Greg Faxon. He is an extraordinary business coach, but he's also building a new coaching business in a different niche. So I'm excited to ask him about that and uh, hear the lessons that he's learning as he's applying his own business and marketing uh, strategies and, and experience into a new niche. And I know that a lot of you watching this are trying to build a service kind of business from scratch. So I think you're going you're gonna to get a lot out of this interview. So Greg and I first met because he was writing a blog post that was going to incorporate different um, sort of thoughts from different you know, experts. And when he reached out to me, um, I said, you know, I don't really do that kind of thing, but maybe we could stay in touch by other things. And somehow we got back in touch. And, and that's also to the testament of the power of, you know, authentic networking. Like we wanted to find a way to uh, connect, to collaborate in a way that, that felt really good for both of us. And Greg was, you know, I think either Greg reached back out or I reached back out, but we felt something there, you know, and um, that's what I encourage all of you to do too, is like when you find a kindred spirit, you know, keep in touch, you know, try to find a way that works for both of you to um, feels like, hey, this is a, a value add to, to, to both of us and to our communities, et cetera. So um, Greg has been so generous over the years in, you know, mentioning me in his blog posts or to his clients. And um, I know a lot of you haven't yet met him, so I wanted to bring him on and share him his wisdom and his story with you guys so greg thanks so much for for doing this interview my pleasure thank you for having me and i want to let you know george i i was thinking earlier today that i really appreciate your approach to staying connected and when you reach out and you know what you want to chat about and i remember we looked at each other's websites a while ago so um i appreciate how you model that sort of authentic networking approach. oh yeah so thank you absolutely so you um, you ha you're, you're such an interesting guy because you are like always on the cutting edge of your field. That's, that's the, that's the feeling that I have anyway. I mean, you're, you, gregfaxon.com, G-R-E-G-F-A-X-O-N.com for those who are looking for your, for the main site that, that I, that I've known about. Now we're going to talk about the new website too. Um, you, you are just, uh, very focused on helping coaches and service providers fill their client roster. So for those of you who would like, I would love to fill my client roster, go and check out gregfaxon.com, F-A-X-O-N. And he has amazing articles there. He also has an online course there uh, if you want his, his strategies and wisdom on how to do this, um, you know, have a full, full business. And you are, I like that you're, uh, it, it, it speaks to your integrity that you're like, you know what, I want to apply my own experience my own strategies to filling a new business and you have multiple interests. Um, you have been a very um, dedicated athlete for most of your life. You've been a weightlifter, you've been a wrestler and now you're like, you know what? I'm going to teach men how to, how to stay fit. Right? So tell us about your, your, your new business. Sure. So this started uh, around this time last year, actually. And I had a couple thoughts at the same time, which kicked this new business off. One thought was, um, you know, coaches often come to me and say, well, your strategy works because you're working with coaches. So of course they're going to invest in coaching. And so maybe what if what you teach only works if you're coaching coaches, right? And we are kind of in a world that gets very meta, right? Where there are a lot of people, you know, offering to help coaches build their business as well. So sometimes if you're just getting into it and you're not a coach for coaches, you're a life coach, business coach, you know, health coach, whatever it is, it's easy to say, well, am I just in this weird little snow globe that, that isn't actually, no one makes money except if they're working with other coaches. So the first thing is I kind of wanted to prove that wrong. Like I'd heard it enough times where I was like, all right, let me just show, because I knew, knew I had worked with clients and none of my clients coach other coaches, but I wanted to, show people that it was possible, not just that I could give advice of how to get clients, but actually show people how to do it. So that was number one. And number two, I was starting to get to the point where I was antsy. I know you will sometimes have side businesses, side projects, and it's this constant tension of mastery comes from focus and discipline and not just quitting when you're in the dip, as Seth Godin would say. 
But also, if you're a creative person, you sometimes reach points where you're lacking motivation or something's not as exciting and you need to try other stuff. And for me, I was at a point where I was more passionate than ever about fitness, which had always been an interest of mine. So I started off last year just running an experiment. And I said, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go through my own course, which is called Coaching Business Bootcamp. I'm going to do it in a whole other niche. And I'm going to journal my process. Each week, I'm going to make a video. I'm going to write a journal entry for my audience of what I did that week, what results I got, what I learned. And it'll be hopefully a fun way to both kick off the new business and spend time on that without neglecting my existing business because I'll kind of be uh, you know, two birds with one stone in terms of uh, serving both sides. So I did what I recommend in my course, which for anyone who's kicking off a business, this is a good strategy. This is one of the things I teach is to put out an offer to your warm network, right? Everyone always wants to start with Facebook ads or, you know, building funnels and webinars and things, but you already have a sea of people who know, like, and trust you. So tapping into that can be scary, especially if you're in a new world as a coach or a spiritual advisor or a healer, because maybe that's something you've kept a little bit to yourself. So you don't want to be judged by the old friend from college who, you know, you used to go drinking with and they knew you as this one person and now you're this other person. Um, and you know that they're going to see that, but sort of coming out as a coach, putting yourself out there to your warm network and offering, ooh, are you still with me? You've yeah. yeah. Right. Um, and offering a complimentary uh, strategy session, clarity session, whatever you want to call it, but a coaching conversation with people in a, with, with who are dealing with a specific challenge in their life. Right. Yeah. And putting that out in a warm way, but also in a compelling way that shows the value of that. Yeah. Uh, conversation. It's not just, Hey, I'll spend 90 minutes coaching you. It's, Hey, here's going to be the focus of this time and what you're going to get out of it. Yeah. Now, of course, a certain percentage of those people will want to work with you beyond that single session. So, um, that's how I recommend that most people get their first five clients is by tapping into their warm network. Facebook tends to be the best way. You can also use Instagram, mm -hmm. put the offer out there. And I give people a template that they customize to their voice and their niche. So um, I did that. I went through my course. I got five clients um, in this new fitness coaching niche and um, so I started working with them and did that alongside my main business. And those clients that I got, that batch of clients, they were primarily focused on losing weight. And in the fitness niche, that's a pretty common result or outcome. Mm -hmm. That's sort of a painful, frustrating problem that someone's been struggling with that. Um, and throughout the 90-day the program, I was working with these people one-on-one. -on -one, People lost between 10 and, and 30 pounds during those 90 days using a, a really habit-based approach, a good sustainable approach. Um, and then I just kind of put it to the side. I did, did those eight weeks of journal entries and I was like, all right, this is good. I got to now focus back on my business. I got to have that discipline to just stay focused on. It's hard enough to scale, you know, an existing yeah. business. Um, so I spent some more time fine tuning and tuning stuff in and in the first quarter of this year, I actually had the best year financially that I've ever had. And I was just focused on <clears throat> gregfaxon.com. I dialed in a lot of my own systems. Um, and at the end of that quarter, it was also the least motivated I ever was for gregfaxon.com. So it was this very weird, um, this very weird contrast. And I just couldn't let go of those experiences I had had with the batch of five clients. And there was something about helping someone with their fitness and their confidence and how they felt in their body that just was really, really fulfilling for me. So um, around you know end of third quarter this year, I jumped back in and I've been doing more journal entries so people can see right on my blog each week, you're seeing what I'm trying and what's working and what's not. And I'm really having to go through that process of building from scratch. It's crazy to look on, you know, my convert kit account and it's like 11 people or whatever. Right. When I'm used to having an audience and, um, and it's, it's good to cultivate that beginner's mind again, too, yes. of going through the process and really having empathy around the same time I was starting this back up. I was running a live cohort of one of my courses and like really being able to feel how they were feeling where when I was only doing gregfaxon.com, I had sort of forgotten what it was like to be in that yeah. starting phase. So that's, that's the story of sort of how I've gotten to this point of starting the new business. So it's called Enough Fitness. It's at enoughfitness.com. And my main focus that I'm working through now and the specialty is helping guys feel good naked. So it tends to be guys, you know, 25 to 35, um, have very, very demanding careers, 
oftentimes have gone up and down in their weight throughout their life. And so I'm sort of exploring what's going to work in terms of attracting clients. Am I focused on guest blogging? Am I going to focus on building a podcast? Am I going to focus on Instagram? There's so many different options. And yeah. so I can even speak a little bit to, you know, I've been speaking for a while, but I can speak a little bit to this idea that might help people in your audience of marketing archetypes. I don't know if we've even chatted about this, but no, we haven't, we haven't, but there's, there's a lot to unpack in what you just said there. Um, I, I want to encourage people to go to your, your website, Greg Faxon, to see those journal entries about you, you know, eight weeks of building a new business. Um, a lot of the folks watching this know that I have all, all, also, uh, over the last year been dabbling with a, a new site project. Now the, the difference between you and me is that, um, I think you gave enough time to it. I mean, even, even in the eight weeks when you were doing it, how much time would you say you spent, uh, in those eight weeks? Um, man, I'm sure I put it in my journal entries, but actually okay. like you, I, I'm like very dedicated to my yes. calendar and right. blocking right. things off. Right. And like I probably guess. spent uh, 10 to 25 hours a week on it. See, that's, that's the key. That's what I didn't do. I spent <laughs> an hour and a half to two hours a week on that side project. That's it. And so all I could really do was write something, make a video, run Facebook ads. Because my, my commitment was that, was that I would keep it secret so that my current audience, I, I wouldn't benefit from, oh, George was already well known yeah, yeah. or whatever. But it's like, no, no, people who have no idea who I am, uh, not, not, no, no friends and family, nothing. It's just like new people, random people finding me through Facebook ads. Anyway, so that is, the, that's the core. I want to just, imp <laughs> I want to make that point that if you think that you could also build a business in two hours a week or even four hours a week, uh, it's, it's really, really, I mean, even for so-called business experts like us, it's highly un unrealistic. So at this point, just to give everyone an update. I'm still dedicated to that hour and a half, two hours a week, but I'm, I'm making it, I'm making it a hobby now and maybe long-term it could become something, but I want to ask you right now about enoughfitness.com. So enough fitness, your, 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 your new business, how, how, how is that related to your eight weeks business? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So oh, that was me picking it. That was me picking it back up. Uh, okay. So in the, yeah, eight so I view those, those eight weeks I did last year was almost like what you would do alongside a full-time job. Like, is this going to work? Can I make money doing this? So great. And then this phase now is like basically as if I basically quit my job in a yeah. way. So because now you're spending 90% of your time yeah. on enough fitness. And, and, and I wanted to offer something to what you said. There's a flip side to that. It's, yes. it's really delicate, that balance. I think that, um, you know, when I was spending, I'll say probably, it's, it was probably 10 hours a week. It probably wasn't more than that. When I was doing the trial, I think that's important to, you need, it's tough because you got to put enough time in to get traction, but then you also can't let go of the thing that's get, making most of your income and where you already have traction. And so I think the flip side is now is, you know, my wife and I recently moved to Burlington, Vermont. So we just went through a move a couple weeks ago and that was, that move coincided with me transitioning to this new business. Oh, wow. So the cash flow is more limited. I have some money coming in from gregfax.com passively, but it's, there's two sides to that is like, yeah. you have to spend the time, but also there's sacrifices and there's instability in that transition as well. Yeah. Um, but I think that, I think that's the balance is, can you get five paid clients? That's sort of how I did it when I started this original business. Like, can you make some good, uh, do you, can you validate it um, alongside whatever your main gig is, even if that's an existing business that you already built yeah. and then being able to devote more time to it? Um, so about enough fitness, I, I mean, this video is going to go on Facebook and YouTube. And I was thinking, man, YouTube is your audience <laughs> because YouTube is like mostly men. I mean, at least when I look at my stats, whereas Facebook, most of my, the, the viewers are, are women on Facebook for my page anyway, mm. but on my channel on YouTube, it's mostly men. And I, but that's, that's generally true for YouTube. It's mostly men in their from teens all the way to, you know, thirties, forties, fifties, et cetera. But it's, it's very, it's very so anyway, I want to encourage you to, to add YouTube to the mix. And I think, I think you're going to reach a lot of your people there. So, uh, you, you started to mention marketing archetypes. Uh, no, we haven't talked about that. Do you want to kind of talk a bit, a bit about sure. that. So one of the things that's been aiding me in figuring out what is my channel and what is my way of reaching people, 
and I appreciate the tip about YouTube, um, is this idea that I developed in the original business around marketing archetypes. And this is something I'd recommend after you get your first five clients. Don't really worry about this until you go through the process. It's not that difficult to get your first five paid clients. There's actually a pretty solid formula that basically works for everyone. You don't need to figure out how, like what your own way of marketing is. Just reach out to your warm network in the right way. And um, it's pretty straightforward. After that, you got to figure out, well, there's hundreds of different ways to get clients. It's really easy to get overwhelmed by everyone to, okay, this is my special system, or you have to do it this way, or you have to be on Instagram, right? And then you end up doing 10 things in a mediocre fashion. So I stole this idea from Malcolm Gladwell, or I adopted it to marketing and coaching. He has this idea in the tipping point that there's three types of people. There's three archetypes that help ideas spread. The first is uh, connectors, second is mavens, and the third are salespeople. Mm -hmm. Okay, so connectors have a naturally large and deep networks. They are naturally curious. They're just charismatic, good at connecting with people, good at listening. Connectors tend to be the pure coaches, the coaches who, like, I don't want to have a signature system. I just want to ask the client questions yeah. and do that pure coaching, right? And I don't even really want to market myself. I just like being with people. Um, the mavens are, you and I are both mavens, so we're idea people, thought leaders. We like to like think about the system and the, and the right, like the best way of sharing a concept and idea, and we like to teach that. Right. Okay, so mavens are natural teachers. And salespeople are, uh, so a lot of people, as you know, a lot of people in our audience get turned off by the concept sales, but they're naturally persuasive. When they have an idea or something they're starting, People just naturally want to buy in because they show this excitement and they're convincing and they're persuasive. Um, and so people that are salespeople like in our industry, think about like Brendan Bruchard or Marie Forleo right. or Tony Robbins, like those people just rally behind them because they're just very persuasive and they get people excited about things. Um, so if you know your archetype, and I actually have a quiz um, on gregfaxon.com, I can give you the direct link, but if people scroll down to the footer, it says quiz and they can figure out their archetype. Um, you can get a sense in this conversation um, and then each archetype has a series of strategies that tend to work well for that archetype. So like most of the stuff we do, all this is really made up. It's not that you have to be just one archetype or that you can't do other things. Yeah. It's just a, a, a way to help guide yourself to narrow down the options and have a sense of your personality so you can market best for your strengths and personality. So let's talk about connectors. So if you think you might be a connector, you tend to know a lot of people, um, you tend to like being with people, asking questions, being curious. Um, things that work well for connectors, referral partnerships, right? Who else in your uh, niche might serve your audience in a complimentary way? Not necessarily in a competitive way where they're doing exactly what you're doing, but in a complimentary way. Mm -hmm. um, how can you add value to their audience? How can you just reach out and start a conversation and start a connection? Um, so this would be an example of a good connector strategy. You reached out, we're doing an interview, uh, we're sharing concepts. Um, I'm also getting the opportunity to teach, which is more of a maven strategy, sure. right? So for connectors, referral partnerships, establishing those referrals can be a really good strategy. Mm -hmm. um, Connectors also tend to do really well on those like free session offers when you launch the business because they've gotten to know and they've established trust with all of these different people and they haven't really tapped into it yet. Yeah. Uh, so second archetype mavens, mm -hmm. what works well for people who are good at teaching? So we like doing uh, like webinars, we like teaching, we like having really super detailed, like I'll, I'll create these blog posts that are really, 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 really long where I'm breaking stuff down. Um, and establishing your kind of unique concepts and thought leaderships and even naming your concepts and things like that. So you become the person, oh, this is uh, George, he's well known for this concept. Right. Um, for salespeople, you really wanna be on calls as much as possible because right. if you can get people, a potential client on a call, like they're probably gonna wanna sign up with you. Yeah. Even if you don't, you're not doing a fancy script or anything like that, they're just gonna be excited to hop on board with you. Um, live uh, speaking uh, engagements can work really well for salespeople because again, people need to be around your energy field. You have a magnetic energy field. Facebook live videos, anywhere where people are getting as directly connected to that natural energy field as, as possible tend to work really well. So, mm. 
uh, the reason I brought this up is because knowing that I'm a maven, it's helping to sort through some of the different strategies that could work for attracting clients. And I know the things that probably don't make as much sense to spend time on because I know what my archetype is. So good. So good. I, I love that. Uh, I love that you are kind of giving people the permission not to have to be good at everything. Uh, I think that's really, that's really, that's really key. It's like, no, I can, I can, I can lean into my strengths and know that if I am consistent there, uh, there will be fruit, you know, that, that comes from it. Well, Greg, it's been great to, to chat with you. Um, so just to recap for those who are wanting to fill their client roster, who want more clients, who want to understand their marketing archetype and the strategies there, uh, people should go to gregfaxon.com, G-R-E-G-F-A-X-O-N.com, Greg Faxon. I'll put the link in the, in the notes of the video. And for those who are men, particularly, so your, your ideal client for enough fitness is guys, you know, 20s and 30s, right? Okay. Who are wanting to be fit, look good naked. <laughs> I love that idea. It's like, yeah, you know, we look at ourselves in the mirror you know, we take a shower, we're like, yeah, you know, <laughs> there's some work here that needs to be done. Why is this always happening or whatever? So yeah, for those, for the guys who want to look good naked, um, go check out Enough Fitness. I haven't even looked at it myself. I'll, I'll go check it out. Enoughfitness.com. Greg, you, you, you walk your talk, both in terms of the business coaching, marketing stuff, as well as your, your fitness. So thank you for the work that you do. Thanks for um, being a, you know, a, a good model in the world. Thanks, George. Appreciate yeah. it. Thank you.